Now or later, Helene here along with Ducky here, and welcome to the 33rd something Sunday. Uh, yeah, we've been going for this for quite a while, and yeah, just in case anyone is new and you know, anyone yeah. on something Sunday, I try maybe two up to four games, typically four late recently uh, uh, games to see if they're any good for streaming. And today we're starting with Pineapple Smash Crew. Well, we also have someone else sort of... Not really pro commenting. I think she is just about hidden because Ink is asleep on my bed. Right, the foot end where the, the blanket is rolled up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's let you this and some tricky this. And there she is. We'll see when she runs off or not. Because I'll have to open the door for her to get out. Okay. Let's get started on this, though. Um, easy, Merc, 
Rumor, no recruits. Okay, I'm guessing extra lies. Failure if all die. Radiation leak danger. Okay, let's try. Again, I know of most of these games, I know little to nothing. I know that this one looks to be some sort of twin stick shooter. Let's see. Name your first four characters, please. Okay, let me go with Alien. Yes. Kier. Yes. Ink. Yes. And Oscar. Yes. Okay. Missions completed, hostiles killed, murder casualties, mothership cordons deciphered. Credits. Okay. So I'm, I'm guessing the game is sort of like a roguelite and that we have to find these uh, yeah, motherships for whatever reason. Let's see. Within target areas, destroy all any hostiles present. Okay. Okay, not even going to bother with any story or something. Uh, grenades. Okay, what sort of grenade was that? James Leader, each merc can hold one grenade. Okay. That does nothing. Uh, don't know what that is, not going to find out. Okay, power cubes. Okay, so experience points. More experience points and a door need. Is that going to do anything? Nope, there's decoration. Another grenade. Okay, that's just... Red is usually boom. <laughs> the moment I saw that was going to blow up on us. Okay. So Ink has a normal grenade, Oscar has a normal grenade, and you and me have missed rocket grenades or something. Pause spear. Nope. That's not me too close to that, and that's a hole in the floor. Okay. I'm hoping you make the hell in the by shooting it. Okay. Yeah, that'll be a good way to clean some place out. Okay, we've got spiders. Uh, okay, so it's not even bothering with story, you're just mercs on a ship, ghost kill shit. Making more fun of what we call test game? Not sure. But what we typically... Oh, I didn't see you there. What we typically... Nope. Let's not be close to that. Uh, oh, there's yeah. oh, some sort of healing station. Okay. Okay. Got our bridge stone. Let's put it. Okay. Uh... What we call a test game would typically be uh, yeah, a game made by people as a, well, a test for something. Like, uh, we've, we've spoken this a few times, I think. Uh, Tonic Trouble, which was made before oops, before Rayman 2. Because, well, they didn't, they didn't know how to make 3D games yet at the time. So, yeah, they made that. <laughs> they made a, an unlock... Uh, a new IP with which they could well, test out what they uh, would, should and shouldn't do in 3D platforms. And that's why <laughs> Rayman 2 ended up like a really good game. And yes, that is okay. on our event that is on our to stream list eventually, and let's not go in there. We're in okay, there's radiation danger. Oh, that's why they're all taking damage at the moment. So, okay. Then we better rush to whatever that target up north is. I was expecting at least some sort of introduction to what the hell is going on. Unless this is one of those typical in-media res uh, games where... It... Okay, those explode. Where the story will come after the first bit. Okay, now where is this target? About to leave. Oh, we already lost. <laughs> we already lost me. It seems. Uh, where Why is this target? Oh. 
and I think Ink is closed as well. We need and to kill all the enemies. Oh dear. And, okay, instantly teleport out. And yeah, I'm just, <laughs> great start. Let's see. <laughs> New recruit jewels. What is this with buying? Oh. oh, we can put on different heads. <laughs> okay. But those costs, uh, they're okay, not really worth it then, I'd say. Uh, okay, now we get more... Still no explanation what the hell is going on. Yeah. Tip one of two, every area on ship in PSC is randomly generated. Detonate, done. Uh, there was something there. The mothership is an incredible valuable strip back, claiming it would fund a smash proof for life. Okay, so yeah it is a I did not think before I shot there. This is basically more arcade game. Or uh, yeah, just go for points and such. Now what is this? Yeah, I don't see us streaming this word. The story is well, you only get to what you're doing here. And that's it. Yeah, maybe something for weekends. We already have quite a bit of things for weekend. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's a sentry drone or something. This feels like the game for people that don't care about store, they just want to shoot. Yeah, if I want to our case. Oh, okay, we have... We have recharging ammo. Okay. Mm, maybe something that probably would have been more fun with multiplayer. There is something else on the map here. At the... Uh, diagonally up and right. Uh, let's go take a look what that is. Yeah, very much a uh, twin stick arcade shooter. Nope, oh, ammo, and one, someone got a bit there. And Okay, yeah, there's also a timer up there for how long it'll stuck for how long it, uh, will, it'll take for, uh, yeah, constant damage to start. Okay. Three times of missing objectives at the upper left, okay. Clear toxic barrels, okay. Uh, oh, one of those floating slugs. Gotta not have those be too close for us. Uh, let's go check out that uh, other symbol on the map this time. Oop. Too close. What is this? <laughs> that is a core. Where it's some a few canisters that we don't want to shoot. Like, what are these? They're not healing pads or something. Oop. Yeah, it could be decorations, but. This for salvaging the ship or something? Access console? For the affair to place Earth government of the time, the Federal Alliance of for the, regener for the re re regeneration of Terra, that's a misspelling, of regeneration, was focused strongly on regeneration of the damaged planet and enlisted large corporations to help with the restoration. Unfortunately, competition between the corporations was fierce ultimately that's a terrible unforeseen consequence. Okay, so there is story in this game. We'll just have to find it in these consoles. Oh, you charge. 
I don't sure what I would think of that. Like... And people, uh, people do like uh, games where the lore isn't just spelled out for you and such, uh, that's a dead end. Like yeah. Dark Souls and such. There are not everyone likes that. And well, yeah, with this you generally be more bu busy trying not to die. Yeah, and I, I like the fact that you can search for lore and all that, but like, you didn't even have a thing, proper start introduction to anything. Yeah. What is this with Hurts Donuts or whatever the hell they're doing? Oh, what the hell what is that? Oh, I hear my Right. That must be one of these toxic barrels that we need to clean up. Some way out. Okay, blowing it up of course works as well. Uh, let's throw that out. Um, put that down to heal. Teleport, hologram. Okay. Uh, Really up with these because the radiation leak is. Why did that blow up? Yeah, I'm... Am I supposed to move these by just shoving them around or something? Or wait. Okay, you can you can shoot them to move them around. That way you don't have to be nearby when you blow up. Oh, okay, that's why it said zero every time. It's <laughs> emptying out the experience of the missions into the characters. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, let's, let's try one more and then probably call it on this one early as a, a hard maybe for the weekend. And, but not for actual... for main week okay. streaming. Yeah, I could not see us making a series of this. Like, the, the environment looks nice, but the rest just... I don't know, you stop them what was in catch my, in my eye, really. Let's grab that. And I guess it doesn't help that it's slightly lagging on my view due to, uh, well, poor internet. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, it is... One of those things I would struggle to help commentate on. And yeah, it's been it's very hot package. It's that one. Mm. And yeah, if there isn't really an upgrade system as well, then it also wouldn't really add to much playability of this game. There's, there's only head things that we can buy, so yeah. Okay, it's been a while since we've only done a game for 15 minutes, but yeah, that'll mean we have 15 minutes more for something else. Yeah, at least it was 15 minutes, not because it was painfully boring or anything, just. Yeah, it not, it's just not fitting for. Uh, uh, yeah, what we typically do. Yeah. And yeah, yeah so we're moving on to the second game. What do we call it? Very bad? What the? Is that you? No. But, uh, welcome to Planet Zoo. I paid my avatar. I thought I already did that when I started this up. I start these games up to see if they work with OBS. Because we've had it a few times now already. Uh, let's just go with that. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Is that supposed to be you? No. I'm, I'm just not going to spend much time on that. Uh, yeah. I, I'm not expecting to really make many streams of this, but we could also do this as a weekend thing. But yeah, Planet Zoo probably doesn't need much introduction. It is basically the new Zoo Tycoon. By the same people who made uh, the new roller coaster tycoon. 
Yeah, there were there were a lot of tycoon games in the nineties. I don't think I ever played the tycoon games. I I played the Sim Zeus and Sim Park, but never any of the tycoon ones. Okay. Well, I guess in a similar way you could say that uh, these days there are a lot of simulator games, like Thief Simulator, Power Wars Simulator, and all of a bunch, just a bunch of all that. So yeah, the 90s were the, the decade of the tycoon games, and the 20s are the <laughs> well, the 10 and 20s are the uh, time of the simulator games. I think that's probably thanks to uh, Surgeon Simulator and Totally Accurate Pando Simulator. <laughs> nice bit of music. Let's see. The tutorial Goodwin House. Renovated and renamed after its purchase by Bernard Goodwin in the 1980s, Goodwin House has since become the most one of the most respected zoos in the country. Most recently it has undergone a further renovation to update many of the habitats and facilities. But due to various issues, the work hasn't been completed. Which is where you come in. Let's put this on easy because yeah, I don't have much of a good uh, history with Tycoon games. Same. Yeah, typically what happens is that I end up overextending and then having to wait hours and hours and hours for enough money to accumulate to uh, actually continue working again. Yeah, that's probably why I'm not so interested in uh, Zoo games and such nowadays, because they are too slow. Okay, it does look pretty out, everything at all. Ah, heyo at Hema too. Yeah, uh, yeah. Oh. oh, oh, sorry about that. I, I, I have a habit of slipping back into the Planko language. <laughs> It's good to finally meet you in person. I'm Bernard, although I insist you call me Bernie. The only person who calls me Bernard is my wife. <laughs> and even then, only when I track elephant dung into the carpets. <laughs> As you know, I own several zoos, but I always like to show people the ropes here at my home. This is the first zoo I ever opened and a source of great pride for me. And prides, thanks to a lion breeding program we ran in the 80s. <laughs> but we're in the middle of a big renovation, and that's where you come in. Sadly, our old contractor had to retire after developing a fur allergy. Uh, poor devil kept sneezing his dentures into the lion habitat. So, it's up to you to finish everything off. Don't worry, though. I'm not completely throwing you into the deep end. My head keeper, Nancy Jones, will be lending a helping hand. Oh, she's a hard worker, and she'll expect you to be too. But I'm sure you'll get along like a house on fire, or even better, <laughs> one that isn't on fire. <laughs> Less shouting that way. <laughs> Hello there. From that rosy, fresh face of yours, I'm guessing you're Bernie's new hire. Good. Now, I hope you're ready to ditch your diploma, because we're about to get really hands-on. But before we begin the real work, how about we familiarize you with the zoo by learning how to fly around it and visiting some of our beautiful animals? We'll start by popping over and having a look-see at the grizzly bears in their habitat. I think that start was a bit of a jab at uh, the Sims language. Very possible. And also... I'm surprised we saw a huge statue of your spirit animal. <laughs> the dodo. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we were playing Ark for quite a while uh, in co-op. And yeah, I, at one point I, was, I joked about that. Also known as Ursus Arctos <laughs> Horribilis, can hibernate for up to seven months a year. <laughs> oh, but then again, given the chance, I think a lot of people would do that too. <laughs> Amen. Wait, hibernate. The bears and you'll bring up its information panel. Hey, Mika. This is where you can find out all kinds of information about your animal. The most important thing being its overall welfare. You'll learn more about animal welfare today as we go through your objectives. But for now, let's enjoy this magnificent animal. Why don't you select the camera at the bottom of its information panel? 
See now, this is a fantastic way to get a close look at your animals. You can also get this view of an animal by simply double clicking on it. Okay. Okay, when you're ready, let's pop over to the other side of the zoo and take a look at the lions. I've marked their location for you to find. Okay, there we go. We, we get out by clicking the, <clears throat> the exit button. Uh, right. Let's see, where are they then? The lions? What's up? I've never heard of bears hibernating for seven months. That's like hibernating almost over half a year. Yeah, that is literally hibernating over half a year. <laughs> yeah, I, I thought they mostly, uh, I thought they mostly hibernated through winter, so maybe three or four months. Yeah, uh, so apparently that's they don't like fall either. Yeah, just. Stepman? That's a lot! Okay, let's have a look Panthera, here. Leo, Leo. Or the West African lion to you and me. Lions are the most social of the big cats, and there can be as many as 40 lions in a pride. Or Leo, okay. Lions of that size are pretty rare. As birds, and they're being lazy. Those lions are awesome, which is precisely why I handle the training instead these days. <laughs> Anyway, how about we get started on those objectives? Come on, let's head over to an empty habitat and see what needs doing there. Okay, empty habitats. I'm questioning some facts here for... So this fact, I feel like it should probably double check for... I would not be surprised if they're throwing a lot of false facts or myths about... From some of the things that I heard, heard about this game is that they are pretty accurate with things. But yeah, with just how many freaking animals there are on the planet, uh, there's a good chance that they might have gotten one or two things wrong. Yeah, well, sure. A pride of water lions, I can't say that possible, but it's or would be common? Something. Well, two somethings. Warthogs. <laughs> so I'd like you to adopt a pair of them. To adopt animals, we need to open the animal market, which is in the animal trading section. Okay, that's down here. There we are, a pair of perfectly splendid warthogs for our zoo. Just click on them and select Adopt from the side menu. Normally, okay. the animal exchange would be full of animals, but I've emptied out the market while you learn how it works. The last thing I need is you accidentally <laughs> ordering a dozen elephants. <laughs> okay, Sharifa and Bornani. Okay, adopt. adopt. When you adopt an animal, it's automatically placed in the trade center where they're held until you're ready to move them into their habitat, which, as it happens, you are. So how about you move them into their new home? Okay, this one has a pretty low longevity. Okay. Place. Um, sent to zoo. Delivery scheduled. And now the other one. When you ask for an animal to be moved into a habitat, your caretakers will go to the trade center, collect your animal, and deliver them to your selected habitat. I've marked the trade center's location, so let's go and watch the caretakers in action. Okay, where is it? You can. Okay, that is. You can <laughs> zoom out of a really far distance and zoom in a lot as well. There it is. Well, as you can see, those caretakers don't hang about. They'll move those animals to their destination as fast as possible. Of course, normally we'd have to place the animals into quarantine before moving them into a habitat. But I am assured by a person of good standing that these warthogs are in the very rudest of health. Right. That's a new one. The the very rudest of health. So we can keep them nice and happy. You see, each animal in the zoo has an overall welfare statistic. Basically how happy they are. And that overall welfare statistic is itself comprised of four different areas. Nutrition, social health, habitat, and enrichment. Luckily, if you select an animal, you'll bring up their animal welfare information panel, which we saw earlier, where you can see how they're doing. That way, you'll know exactly what areas need to be addressed. Don't worry if that's a lot to remember. You can always check the Zoopedia for more information. Okay, yeah, obviously start, we need to give them toys sure or such. Care of the warthog's nutrition welfare. To do this, we'll need to place a food station and a drinking station. Now, each animal requires a different type of feeding station. 
And for the warthogs, it's a small feeding trough. So let's add one of those and a water bowl. Okay. Feeding troughs. And water bowl. Let's put those Animals near the entrance. Also require stimulation to keep them happy. Let's add a lovely mud bath for the warthogs to roll around in. <laughs> that bath will count towards their enrichment welfare. Specifically, Oops, someone lost a balloon. Enrichment welfare. Oh, nice work. You've got a knack for this, I see. Now, our contractor had to leave in a hurry, so this place is in a feral state. Unfinished thingamajigs and watsits all over the shop. But the first thing we need to finish is the ostrich habitat. It's over near the hippos. Okay. Yeah, this, this all looks really good. And the tutorial is simple so far, but it's not extremely hand holdy like you see in some games. Oh, if it sounds very handholdy at the moment, uh, it's not really? telling you to click this Let's and click that and click over there and corner. such. Yeah. Pause. Okay. <sighs> That's more like it. A quick break. Sometimes it's a good idea to pause the game whilst you're doing something which requires your concentration, because it'll stop the zoo spinning out of control while you're looking the other way. Let's keep the game paused while we get this ostrich habitat built. Okay. Job number one here is to add a habitat gate before we complete the barrier. Every habitat needs a habitat oh. gate. After all, how else would the keepers get in and out? <laughs> Just make sure it's hooked up to the path so the keepers can reach it. Uh, because, of course, they don't want to get their feet, <laughs> their shoes dirty or something. Right. Let's complete the perimeter barrier so we can adopt us some ostriches. I've marked out an area for you to use, so I'd like you to finish off the perimeter using the brick barrier. Okay, then, okay, we just, it just holds out an area like that. Oh, and it moves the camera automatically along. Okay. And, hmm. Is it only to a certain length like that, or, hmm. Panel too short. Okay. Uh, now we can go to this one. Oh, we okay. We we can raise the, the height of the wall as well, and we already put down a wall. Uh, let's see, what is this then? Uh, what I mean, I mean a door, a door. Oh, that moves the entire thing. Uh, uh, that is not what we want, really. Uh, I think that we said it, but the door is over here. Mm. Uh, how do I deselect that? Uh, hmm. What the heck? Uh, uh, I can see why I, I have watched the most of this, but I have watched a little bit of Jurassic World uh, pop in there. Remember, before you can place animals in any habitat, it has to have a full loop of connected barrier. Now, you've probably noticed that guests can't actually see into this habitat at the moment. At least not without a stepladder. <laughs> but seeing as they're banned, I'd like you to select a piece of barrier and swap out the brick for a glass barrier so the guests can see in. Yes, that would be a, over here probably good. Uh, how do I swap there? Glass. There we go. Uh, highlight the section, click on the button. Uh, oh, that put it. That put in a extra little thing here. Um, hmm. Okay, let's put. There okay, we there we go. Select Adding it, and then the material. Gives guests even more opportunities to see the animals in a habitat. It's always best to make sure the guests can get a good view into a habitat from the path they're walking on, because it makes them happy, and because this would be a pretty terrible zoo if they couldn't. <laughs> The last thing yeah. we need to do is to add a donation box. You see, when guests enjoy the view of an animal, they'll make a donation. Just make sure you put them in easy to reach places like near a viewing point. Donation boxes are one of the main sources of income for the zoo, so make sure you remember them. Let's see. Add a donation box. Uh, where is that then? It's no, pointing no, out no, over no, there. No. But no, have donation boxes, yes, but not for students. the play button. After all, if the game's paused, then so are our caretakers, which will make it a bit tricky for them to deliver the ostriches, eh? 
By the way, as well as pausing the game, you can speed the game up by clicking on the fast forward button. It'll run everything at two times and five times faster. It can be useful, especially if you're waiting for money to accumulate or for animals to be delivered to your habitat. Personally, I use it when I'm waiting for a brew to finish. All right, <laughs> you've finished the habitat, so it's high time we adopted those ostriches, don't you think? Let's get four of them in here. Okay, animal training, adoption, Iberi, Chuma, Izok, and Abake. Let's see, this one has a go appeal. Okay, so that is how appealing they are. Um, guessing based on the stats somewhat, and maybe how much they'd be liked by people. So the, a chance of how uh, much donations that they could bring in or something. Possible. Okay. But, but this makes me rather uh, what, for some reason, uh, yeah, Jurassic World uh, Park Builder. Uh, Jurassic Park Evolution, I mean. <laughs> yeah, I've seen a bit of that game, but it, from what I saw, it wasn't actually too interesting. While we wait for them to be collected by the caretakers and brought to the habitat, you should get it ready for them. Add a suitable feeding station water station and an appropriate food enrichment item it's often best to place things like enrichments and feeding stations near to the habitat perimeter so guests can get a really good view of the animals okay right that was to say and we're probably not playing it but i definitely will enjoy when the dinosaurs break out yeah from what i heard that doesn't actually uh, happen well, it it can happen in the. Oh, <clears throat> good to see the yeah. ostriches have somewhere they can really stretch their legs. Uh, you know it can happen can in that game, but it 40, there's not actually much that hour? you can do when it well, does. Heaven forbid they ever escape. <laughs> the speed camera finds alone would bankrupt us. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, Bernie you... certainly mm. seems impressed. Did he do his speed camera joke? <laughs> every time we get an ostrich so now we've made the ostriches lives a bit better let's do the same for the keepers shall we to make it easier for the keepers to feed the ostriches and hippos we should build a new keeper hut keeper huts are where the keepers prepare the food for animals so they should be placed near to the habitats to make sure the keepers don't waste their time walking when they should be looking after the animals uh, yeah, like I was saying, one of the criticisms I heard about that game is uh, <clears throat> that uh, yeah, it seems to be lacking features. Like, like you say, when you know, dinosaurs break out, you can send over a ranger you know, station or some or ranger copter or something to go after them, but there isn't. They just get to it, trank it, and put it back in the cage. As far as I think it. I, there's another. Uh, I think I even have that in the back in my collection here. Another uh, Jurassic Park game or Zula type game. Uh, where is it? It's probably under J. And um, yeah, that game had a lot more to offer, to my not remembrance, which again isn't always too great. Just say if I'm not portable anymore or something. Uh, I hear you still. Uh, there it is. Uh, moving this out. Oh, something gets squished. Um, yeah, here it is. Jurassic Park Operation Genesis. Ah, uh, that one. Yeah. It, it yeah. Was, with that, I believe if, some, if dinosaurs broke out, you had the option to go hunt them down yourself with, as well. Wait, you can do that with evolution as well. Okay, then I hmm, then I was misinformed or misremembered. I think that most people just don't do it because they already see the animal rampage. <laughs> yeah. But it seems so you to do it. And I think it's probably a bit more of a bigger feature in the new game, I think. I haven't heard too much of the new game, but it seems to be more capturing the dinosaurs again and all that and do reserve reserves perhaps okay i i Perfect. didn't actually i 
I may have heard of a new Jurassic Park at some point, but the last one, to my knowledge, was that Zookeeper one. I forget the name of it. Evolution? Yeah, probably Jurassic Park Evolution. Evolution, Evolution okay. 2 is coming soon. Okay. And that's come uh, out. There are more Jurassic Park games coming out also. also. One is VR game that's already out, and I think there's a survival horror one coming out too. So basically, Dino Crisis, but Jurassic Park? Yeah. <laughs> and that's also one for another, yeah, Dino Ops something for cell phones. This may be a good point of for the name and oh, how it sounded like sounded like a good game until they realized, oh, it's for mobile. Get it to connect up to the path. Let's see, how do we turn this? Z? No. Hmm. And I find it annoying that many new Jurassic games are mostly on mobile phones. Okay, there oh, we hold the Z keyed. Uh, let's see. Yeah, mobile phones can get very annoying with things. And why is there... There's a door on this side, but the pointer is on the side of the house? What the heck? Yeah. Look, it reminds me, a, a YouTube called Gearing Beaver that done a lot of Jurassic Park games on a mobile phone, kind of how he started his channel. He, he said that he wants more Jurassic Park games not on the mobile phones or iPads. He wants some, some PC and PlayStation. Yeah, there's even a Jurassic Park version of Pokemon Freaking Go. Yeah, he plays it, but he still wants, again, as I said, more on uh, computers and stuff. So it's not, not another game you play just to pay extra money, just a cash grab. Yeah. Okay. This keeper hat only has space for one keeper, but the larger keeper hat can allow multiple keepers to prepare food at the same time. Oh, but bear in mind that keeper hats and other staff facilities shouldn't be placed near to areas where there are lots of guests. Guests don't like seeing facility buildings and it can affect their happiness. Hmm. Negatively. <laughs> In case that wasn't clear. Something that all facilities, shops, and a whole host of other objects need is power. And that obviously includes your newly built keeper hat. So let's place a transformer next to it, shall we? Okay, something I noticed here. The, the, they aren't just randomly standing in front of it. They are actually standing where they have a line of sight. Because there was a group standing here. And I'm guessing they were looking at the ostrich that was standing over there. So, yeah, they aren't just dumb... Uh, Puppets moving around, just standing in front of things. Great, hmm. Roy. Now, the reason everything has gone blue is because you're using the power heat map. This map allows you to see what is and what isn't powered in your zoo. So, once you've placed your transformer, you can click in the bottom left to turn the heat map off. Okay. Uh, invalid rotation, but. Uh, oh, it wasn't accessible. I can see the Lovely work. floor now. Now the keepers can start using um, the hat to prepare food. And thanks to where you've put it, they won't need to walk very far to deliver it to the ostriches and hippos. Let's get on there. to your next objective then. Bengal tigers. We want to adopt some, but I'm afraid there's nothing ready for them yet. Head on over to the plot of land I've marked out. It's not too far away. Okay, over here. I still wonder if they're selling to build a habitat from scratch. <laughs> and concrete and glass, I expect. So, go ahead and build it. Just make sure that the habitat includes that big hole we've dug. Oh, and don't forget to add a habitat gate to the barrier. Uh, you were going to say? Uh, what's the same? Make sure the guests will be able to yep. see the tigers. <laughs> She's just not going to shut up, is she? Yeah, right. As I was to say... Is I on? Um, all right. I'm. I've been to see when I've never seen anyone come get annoyed that that's a facility building near a area where you feed the animals and such. Well, at least in my experience, yes, I might be wrong, but most people, at least in Sweden, are tolerant against that. So they will not see it negatively. They will say, "Oh, 
That's how I did the, the pearl of food nearby. Yeah, no, they have got a train running around. Uh, what? They've got a train running around. Uh, pointing at the string on my end doesn't really help, but... Yeah, I see this tra train. I I'm wondering why the heck is that there? Okay, but yeah, well, I think that people get unhappy to see a ranger hut. Does it make sense to me? Bernie takes safety very seriously at his zoos, so we should probably make sure those tigers can't jump out of their habitat, don't you think? The way we'll do it is by changing the height of the habitat's barrier. Okay then, you should start by double-clicking the habitat barrier, which will take you into barrier editing mode. Great. Now highlight the entire perimeter of the habitat. You can do that by clicking and dragging the barrier selection tool. Okay, that is this one, I think. Um, it is this one, right? Or height mode, flat top, height snap, length. Hmm. Okay. Um. Let's replay that. Great. Now highlight the entire perimeter of the habitat. You can do that by clicking and dragging the barrier selection tool. Okay. You, you were doing that earlier. Hmm. Uh, edit barrier. Drag this widget to select the which widget. That's the distance I'm thinking. Okay, that, that is it, but only for a slack. Wait. Okay, let's unselect again. Uh, remove this. There, now it should select the entire thing. Edit barrier. Now you've got all of the oh. perimeter selected, you can increase the height of it by clicking and dragging the barrier height tool upwards. You'll want to make sure it reaches a height of at least 3.7 meters. Okay. Let's see. There we go. Let's even it off at four then. Now that the habitat is in place, don't forget to put down a donation box near to your viewing areas. We need every dollar we can get. <laughs> Especially is these thing? tigers aren't exactly eating instant noodles for lunch. Uh, in some zoos, probably. In the zoos that I've re frequented, I'm... Actually, now that I think about it, I'm not really sure. Yeah, hmm. There was I have, you pay a ticket to enter. Yeah. That's it. There's no donation boxes. Okay, that's the habitat boundary complete, the habitat gate in place, and most importantly, the tigers won't be able to jump out of it anymore. I think it's time we adopted those tigers. Okay, it could have pointed out the thing there for a bit, but oh well, this is small gripe. Okay, and more trading again. Market. Katyusha and Ryan. Okay, that's a bit of a difference in name. It 12,000 for each of these. 12 and 10. Okay. And again, these are quite uh, sizable and also somewhat rare creatures, I think. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Whilst our trusty caretakers collect and deliver the tigers, let's take a look at preparing the habitat for their arrival. We'll start with the basics. Add a suitable feeding station for them. Okay, is there someone? Yeah, there's one of them coming already. The habitats, food's very large. Let's put that over. Now let's keep that here, just to, so that it is close to the entrance. This time, instead of adding a water bowl, let's try something different. Some animals need a pool in their habitat so they can go for a swim, but they can also use it to drink from. All you have to do is make sure the banks of the pool have a gentle slope so they can easily get a nice, refreshing drink. There's already a pool excavated, but you still need to fill it with water. You should do that by going into terrain and selecting the water tool. And there. Yeah, I'm not feeling this game. Probably because 
If he's hard to talk with her. Yes, that'll do nicely. Of course, just like the warthogs and ostriches, these tigers will also need some enrichment. Why don't you add some suitable toy and food enrichment items into their habitat? Let's see. Frozen blood pumpkin. Okay. And the rubbing pads. Uh, put that here. Okay, it's really starting to take shape. Yeah, this actually doesn't have too yeah. much of a view the in here. Is that on the ground? So they can hide from the guests, or more likely it's the a shadow. weather. Although, given that we're in England, oh, you might what? want to think of that just as normal weather. <laughs> yeah. Go on, There's a sh shadows of balloons. You can either build oh. one from various All right. suitable bits and bobs, or if you like, just pop down the blueprint that I've already built for you. Okay, uh, let's put that down in this corner here. Let's see, the opening is there. So, yeah, let's put that uh, here. <laughs> it it oh, sort of has the, the tree clipping through I'm it, sure but okay. I'm sure have escaped your attention that the tigers look a bit miffed. That's because they aren't too keen on the type of terrain in their habitat. Select a tiger and bring up its information panel. Okay, terrain tab. Um, click on the terrain tab. That way you can view the terrain information and see how they feel about the different types of terrain. That'll tell you what the tigers need more of or less of in this habitat. Okay. I see you all over. Open the terrain editing tool, select painting, and give them some more soil. Yes, that should help with the habitat part of their welfare. Right, we're seeing we are over half an hour. Yeah. So let, let's just finish up with the tigers here. And let's see. They are, are good on soil. They need more short grass. Um, I think mean, normally I would like Nancy probably when trying to talk to you. Is where she usually pops up. Yeah. Oh, oh we actually need less short uh, grass. Or long grass. Okay. Oh, there's that then. Mm -mm. They say the good fences make good neighbors. I guess that's doubly true when one of the neighbors is a Bengal tiger. <laughs> Still, those tigers look so happy that I doubt they'd leave. Even if you did poke a hole in their fence. <laughs> Uh, they probably still get to oh, try to get out. Sake, don't test that theory. <laughs> right. Okay, so Let's there's actual the rewards for doing all of this. To improve their social welfare. Okay. Uh, yeah, not really a thing for a main week stream. Uh, let's save Zoo, because I'll probably be playing this on my own time at least. Yeah, I don't see this really have much story and all that. Yeah. Now, there is a career, so that sort of counts as a story, but yeah, not really much. Maybe occasionally on the weekends. But yeah, let's move on to the third game. Which is... This is the one I spoke of. This is one is most definitely as good as a yes on streaming eventually. And it's also by TQ <laughs> Nordic. We also made the Dark Shadows games we are currently working on. Or we are currently streaming. Okay, that was clever of them. Yeah, Volition, I'm not... I think they made the first games as this as well. And yeah, this is Random Action Guerrilla. Remastered. <laughs> yeah, honey uh, remaster names are a bit of a thing at the moment as well. Yes. I don't know if it was you or someone else I see you play this during the earlier days on the uh, screen here. I'm pretty sure I haven't. But yeah, we have remastered here. We have Darksiders War Masters, and then there's Darksiders 2 Death Definitive Edition. Yeah. I just remember someone not a be able, able to know how to drive a damn car. It's not pretty damn like you. Oi. <laughs> Oi. 
Uh, how many times you've basically been crushing? Yeah, that is not knowing how to drive a car. But yeah, let's get into this game because this one is pretty fun. The Red Faction series is a pretty good series overall. Like, a lot of... Yeah, I'll mostly shut up for this. <laughs> Alex Mason. Mining engineer. Demolitions Class C. Report to Parker Sector. Fun ride? Yeah. A blast. How's mom? She misses you. Sorry I missed Dad's funeral. Things here have been hard. No one expected you to come halfway across the system. What the hell was that? Well, the EDF. They own the road and everything else. Forget the propaganda. Free Mars is over. Wilhelm. Faction? Didn't enough people die the last time? We're under martial law here. Prison camps. Torture. Death squads. People need something to believe in. Well, this is it. I've got your gear over there. So here's how it works. It'll be a couple of weeks before you... Wait here. Nope. That's the woman from the wanted poster. Or wanted hologram. I've seen her somewhere. I doubt. Like I was saying, the sooner we get to work, the sooner we get paid. Loading Parker. Okay. Yeah, the story with the Red Faction is uh, basically in the first game, you are a worker on the ground the with Mars. I was telling you about. Hmm? It was a research outpost once, before the Marauders killed the scientists. Marauders? You don't want to be caught out here after dark, but it's a good place to find salvage. I'm here to mine, not hunt for scrap. On Mars, scrap is like gold. Got your sledgehammer and charges? Good. Let's see what you can do. I'm getting a bit of a flashback Shit. now, I think. In the sky. EDF gunship. Didn't think they'd be out here today. I'll keep an eye on it. You get the salvage. I think maybe one of the first streams I did was trying to stream the original Gorilla. Yeah, it might oddly be. failed or something. I just remember a lot of uh, crushed cars. See that salvage on the ground? Pick it up so we can trade it. But yeah, the story with Red Faction was basically uh, humanity, well, of course, got off of Earth and started spreading to other planets for mining. Uh, Earth wasn't terraformed, so there was a lot of mining done underground, if I remember correctly. Not, I might be wrong on the terraforming bits, but it was in, inhospitable to say the least. And basically, uh, yeah, people were being lured in with uh, a honey trap like system, like promising uh, this and that and such if you work over on Mars. But when you get there, uh, yeah, you're basically you were basically a slave. And yeah, now that things uh, now things are pretty much just back to that. Only the planet is uh, terraformed this time or had an atmosphere at least. And salvage is found by causing destruction, collect salvage and trade it for upgrades. Yeah, this is our currency. Yeah, yeah. And... <laughs> um, red Faction is the enemy? No, Red Faction is on the Rebels. Alright. Yeah. And the EDF, the Earth Defense Force. Uh, yeah, they, those are the, the goons. Let's see. Left or right to swing? Okay. okay. Ah. 
And yeah, you might be thinking, how is the hell is this guy so strong? But Mars has a lower gravity, I think, which makes people who are well, born and raised on Earth who, and thus have more muscle to their uh, to their bones due to higher gravity. Uh, that makes yeah. them uh, comparatively superhuman in strength, at least. Let's see. Yeah, but would, that, section. would that really transfer to breaking down walls with ease? Uh, not really too much, but it could just also be that this is all crappy design. Then again, that is obviously rebarring here. Now let's see, laboratory and tower. They're hey, marked in the minimap. Use charges and take down that big structure right there. Right now you can set two charges before you detonate them. Remember, you can swap weapons and still use the detonator. Come back to me if you run out of charges. Let's see. Yeah, the, the, the main draw of this game is a somewhat realistic up, physics Alec. system. Yes, yeah, shut yeah. up. What the hell is going on? Who's the girl? You know what's going on. Alec, the Red Faction could really use a guy like you. To do what? What are people doing out here? Whatever it takes. I'm not a terrorist, Dan. You think I am? The idiot are wiping out towns. Alec, we need help. Hey, you got me into enough trouble Earthside. I just want to do honest work here. That's what we're fighting for. We don't resist, they'll take everything. Enough. You'll see I'm right about this. Okay, yeah, if you if you damage the support of something enough, it'll come charging down. <laughs> it'll come crashing down. And just need to find the scrap through everything. You could also just hammer away at something enough until it comes crashing down. It's a stubborn pillar. It is an option. It is like, no even bother we go, just roll up and pass down the enemy's uh, fortification. Yeah, the problem is that a lot of those EDF forces are also from Earth, so they still have a lot of uh, muscle <laughs> on their bones as well. Because yeah, if if you were born on Earth and then went to a place of lower gravity, like space in general, uh, yeah, you wouldn't your muscles wouldn't get the same workouts as they would normally. And oh, that tower. So yeah, over time they would start deteriorating unless you start doing more workouts specifically to keep them from uh, yeah, deteriorating. <laughs> Okay. And um, I guess that military people do plenty of exercising. And we got hurt from something. Did we get hurt by a freaking barrel there? <laughs> Let's just take this thing down. Just break the foundation and the rest can stop laying down like a house of cards. Okay, so... Okay, so the scrap blinks a bit. And there we go. Okay, just pick up all the scrap that's been dropped, or well, not much scrap apparently. <laughs> uh, yeah, basically the half of this game is just uh, a stress ball. That you can break down practically anything you see except for the ground itself. We need to hide. From what? That. Daniel Mason, you are under arrest. Surrender or we will open fire. Alex, run! Run! Yeah, not even giving the chance to surrender, huh?
The Earth Defense Force changed the face of Mars. They terraformed so we could breathe the air. They built bases, checkpoints, watchtowers. The Liberators soon became an occupying force. And now they killed my brother. Dan said they'd take everything. For me, they already have. Drop the weapon, now! <laughs> you guys afraid of a hammer? Drop it, smartass. Hey, what right have you got to trash Your my- Your brother is Daniel Mason. Yeah, he was. He's dead. This trailer and its contents have been confiscated by the Earth Defense Force. We're placing you under arrest. For what? Don't play dumb with me, Miner. Your red faction. Look, I just shipped here from- I guess you work fast. We found these detonators among your possessions. I'm a mining engineer. I have a permit for the- It just got revoked. <laughs> Do you need any more evidence that they it's base Morris has basically become Red Korea under these guys? Maybe people wouldn't have the need to turn to terrorism if you weren't fucking assholes. No, oh, it's him again. They'll hunt you from here to the ice caps. He said I was Red Faction. Like it or not, Mason, you are now. That, it was pretty certain he was going to join them anyways. But yeah, just double whammy fuck over someone and yeah, you're making definitely a new enemy. <laughs> Yeah. Mason, my name is Simone. I worked with your brother. <laughs> Lucky you. I know this is a lot to take in, but you're going to have to trust us. Why? Because you don't really have any other option. The commander thought you should have this field manual. It'll help you survive out here. Let's see. Tutorial videos and other information. Okay. Welcome to the Red Faction. Hmm. We'll start off with the basics. There are six populated sectors on Mars. Parker, Dust, Badlands, Oasis, the Free Fire Zone, and Eos. All of which are controlled by the Earth Defense Force. Our goal is to liberate all six sectors driving the EDF off the planet. There's only one problem. The EDF is a professional military organization. They've got the money, the training, and the firepower to take us down. Direct assaults are suicide. We need to hit their weak points, attack them when they least expect it, destroy high-value targets, and then get the hell out of there. Okay, guerrilla tactics. If you ever tactics. need to hide from the EDF, restock ammo, or choose a different set of weapons for your field work, safe houses are set up throughout the world. Any available safe house will be marked on your map. Good luck. But, yeah, something I think I forgot a bit is... Uh, over in the original Red Faction, Red Faction 2 isn't canonical to this same timeline, or anything, I think. Uh, in the original Red Factor, it was the Ultor Corporation who were basically the slave masters of the planet. And the EDF was called in uh, as the Liberators, which was why they called them Liberators at the start. But yeah, then they start doing the same thing. And I'm pretty sure, I'm not really sure if it's ever stated, but... Uh, it's pretty likely they control all the communications off the planet as well. So for all, you know, they could just be saying that everything is going perfectly fine on the planet and the well, Earth won't bother then if they only get a green light. Which is how they can keep going with this shit. Uh, yeah, th this game, this game is almost certainly going to be streamed sooner or later because it's just plain freaking fun, and it looks a hell of a lot better than the original, I must say. Because yeah, the original looked a bit like a 
everything got roughed down with like a, a, a kilo of sand on every square inch of surface. Well, that's not I mean, one of the, the big ones I've seen, but this one looks a little bit better. Yeah, this is the remastered edition after all. <laughs> yeah, I, I just got to chuckle every time they put in one of those pun subtitles or thing. Yes. <laughs> Hey, the sector contains missions that must be completed for liberation. Completing a mission also rewards you salvage. Yeah, yeah that's practice training, I think. Or pra target practice. Move, that's the word. Mason, this is our former base of operations. We had to clear out before the EDF discovered it. Now we just need to cover our tracks. I know you're familiar with demolitions, so maybe you can help us out. We need that building destroyed. Blow up anything that the EDF could trace back to us. Think you can handle it? Okay. Yeah, most of these missions will involve demolitions, but not all of them. And even when they don't directly involve them, you can always use them as, uh, well, to this get around. Piece of cake. We're transmitting the base coordinates now. Okay. Using your map, displace objectives, other place of interest, follow the nav beacon to get to the abandoned base. Of course, that is going to show Got the direct route. Yeah. We can always take our own Davies. way. Hugo Davies. How'd you get caught up in this? The mining conglomerates found a huge ore deposit beneath our colony and tried to force us off the land. When we resisted, the EDF rolled in. It was a massacre. Yeah, I'm typical sorry. corporate police forcing. Colonies and our numbers grew. Your brother joined us soon after. <laughs> It was always Dan's problem. Couldn't run from a fight. Maybe. And yeah, like I said, we can tear our down basically anything that isn't just the surface of the planet itself. <laughs> and yeah, here's that old base. Let's see. Where is this it? There's a box here somewhere. Okay, they want All right, the, I'm this destroyed. The and this is for Good. restocking. Use whatever you can to bring her down. Yeah, ammo crates, remote charges, assault rifle. Okay. Okay, so let's just bring this thing up. You can shoot them or set charges to blow them up. Okay, one over there. Oh, definitely one over here. One there, one in the corner. Uh, alert level. As the alert level rises, the EDF becomes more hostile towards you. Escape from the EDF to return the alert level to green. Okay. Mason and EDF units are your way You said this was going to be easy. And there it goes. More EDF are on the way. Get back to the safe house. Uh, yeah, let's just run. <laughs> you don't always have to go into combat, but in the later end of the game, it will become more required as you go. Let me guess. The sledgehammer is the best weapon. Uh, one of the... and uh, hello. Oh, that's... For a moment I thought that might have been Earth, but no, that is just a moon going around. Right, it was supposed to have two or more? Um, Phobos and another one. Oop. You said this was gonna be easy! Good work. Yeah, I'm fine, but they gave up easy. You've done your brother proud. Yeah, he had the and same definition of easy as you. Hey, better red than dead? Well, that is a very known com Morale bonus. Oh, yeah. Mo morale is something you can up by doing other things, I think, right? Just and lowering the control that they have. The luxury of playing it safe. Your brother understood that. Mason, we need your help. There's new info in your guerrilla handbook that will be useful. Okay. The EDF's hold on each sector varies. 
bring up your map to see the control value for each sector. Successfully completing guerrilla actions like raids drives control down. So does destroying EDF property, which is shown in red on your map. We've identified targets that are key to EDF operations. The ones marked as medium importance cause a bigger control drop when destroyed. A few are marked as high importance. Those require some planning before you hit them, and will turn into a hornet's nest when you do. But the payoff is big. Each sector also has missions which are required for liberation. Drop the control to zero, complete all the missions, and the EDF will pull out. Uh, yeah. Now we're going to defeat the EDF, we need the support of the people. To do that, we have to raise morale in each sector. Morale goes up as you complete guerrilla actions, destroy EDF propaganda, and a few other things you'll discover along the way. However, when a colonist is killed, that sector's morale drops, so be careful. As morale in a sector increases, ammo crates will be better stocked and colonists will begin to fight alongside you. Also, the amount of salvage you get for completing a mission will increase if morale in the sector is high. Higher morale means more ammo, more help, and more salvage. Three crucial elements we need to succeed. So yeah, one bar needs to be emptied, one bar needs to be filled. We're not really required, but it'll still help a lot if, when, she, when you start getting morale bonuses. So yeah, this, this game... It, we're definitely doing this eventually, even if just for the fun of tearing shit down. <laughs> what have we here? One of 300 ore deposits. Work the lands. Ore deposits can be destroyed to produce large amounts of salvage. Okay. Like, <laughs> why these guys haven't touched it yet? Um, hello there, Abby. Uh, someone just stepped in for a second. But yeah, it, it wouldn't be an open world game uh, without just stuff to find all over the place. Mm, True. Let's see. I think we are. <laughs> no, nobody is breaking in. We, no, we did have the burglar alarm go off twice last night, but that was because Oscar got his dumb ass stuck in the freaking garage, which has a motion sensor inside. Oh. Let's see, I, I think things that are marked on the map uh, in red are EDF property and why are they coming charging in? Okay, okay you, you started this. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, while we're here, let's blow these up. EDF control drop. Destroying EDF... Liberate... Zero. Okay, I'll explain that. And yeah, that, these things just go up big. Oh, hello. Kind of missed there. Let's see. Abby in the chat again. If you pandas are from mountainous areas <laughs> in Tibet, how come you only eat and move with this prone to grow in drier, more arid regions? couldn't say oh, hello uh, bye bye uh, first off though let's grab the salvage in here i don't think they made it shine in the original which made it a lot e harder to find uh, that there needs to go missed oh uh, now let's just get out oh, that, that is oh, yeah <laughs> And that is how easy you can die. And donk. <laughs> so, well, yes. I didn't need to bonk you. <laughs> no, Mason did that with his own face on the ground. <laughs> yep, and with, as a final touch, a pole uh, fell on his head. Also, I think Parker is the name of the main antagonist of Red Faction 1. Let's see, you will respawn at the nearest available safe house, cause morale to drop. Okay, so that is a reason why not to die. <laughs> oh. 
Because, yeah, in some games you just don't get penalized at all when you die. So people will just you know, charge heads straight. You know, yeah. They'll charge head on into trouble. Uh, destruction targets. Buildings marked in red are EDF owned. Destroying them drops EDF control. Yeah, basically what I said already. Or is that? I'm not sure. I'm, I don't even know if there are really any ores that are crystalline like that. Like, then it would be more mineral. Okay. Let's see. Oh. Let's put one there. And one here. And there we go. We do got to keep an eye out keep all of things flying around, because we can get hurt by debris. Let's oh, oh yeah, the alert is with the blinking button, which is now in orange, and hello there. Why metal parts come flying out of a red crystal, don't ask me. Two more fuel tanks or something here. Yeah, that's two on the same one. But yeah, th this game is just going to be a lot of fun. Bloody heck. And actually, I thought I still don't know how I may seen the play this before. My might be more for the Acceptikai. Could be. I'm pretty sure I've tried to at least record this at one point. And what is those purples? Oh, okay, the purple are the mine deposits. Okay, so that, that is useful that they have that on the map, so you can find it a lot easier. Oh, hello there. Hmm. All right. But, yeah, again, for like the fourth time, we will stream this in full eventually. Maybe on the, f the weekdays, maybe on, uh, maybe on Saturday. But for now, I think we've seen about enough of this. So let's move on to the next game. Uh, which is Redeemer. So we, we could have gone an another 15 minutes with that one. But, yeah, we wouldn't want to show too much. Yep, and... Um, might be good to have a game... Uh, so something will be finished in a good time before. We have a few streams we went over time on. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this game is called this Redeemer. And, yeah, since, the, since this is showing... Oh, there's co-op. Okay. Let's just get right into it. My 1,000th morning of peace. I guess I need to reset that counter. No, that's the, that ain't the morning of peace. The temple of the vanishing star was supposed to be unreachable by anyone who didn't know its secret location. It has been a perfect shelter for many years. It has brought me a new home, a new family, and a new purpose. They say the temple was built to offer those willing the fulfillment of a simple, hard-working life. A life of discipline over body and spirit. Here I was no longer a soldier, no longer a tool, no longer a dog. I was a brother and a seeker of wisdom. That's what they told me, and I bought into the idea. But it's not easy to change a man like me. I did everything asked of me, but when it came down to meditation, I could still hear echoes of war firing up under my skull. I am an addict, you see. You can have an addict live 40 years resisting temptation. Then you give him a taste of his addiction, and he spirals out of control. 
That's why I hoped I would never hear another gunshot in my life. Monks say that when you meditate, you shouldn't allow your past or fears of the future affect your awareness of the present. It's very hard today. Okay. Rude Awakening. I recognize this. Have you guys seen someone play a, uh, the Axis version of this that I uh, you gave to go? Okay. Okay, yeah. The top down, green stick like. And there we go. Uh, yeah. I've seen some things about this game mostly. I, I check, I at times check the, oh, the reviews to be able to get a decent feeling of a game like that we aren't going to waste our time entirely with something that will, oh, that will, will take a look at for five minutes and then toss out the window. That's cute, Perry. Oh, hello. Okay, limited durability melee weapons. I, Okay, getting your ass beat by a buff monk with a torch, that would hurt. Yeah, yeah I also tried to uh, read up on uh, reuse, but I tried it carefully. Carefully read both the negative and positive. Or sometimes that is some very bad negative reviews, like that's a very good simple game, then someone left a bad review complaining it's not multiplayer. Yeah, that's just that's just nitpicks. Yeah. I think there was an execution something ava available because I did see you know, environment-based executions in the trailer of this. Let's see. And also, if I only see awesome game, I that doesn't tell me anything. Yeah, and especially when they've had like not even an hour of time in the game. Yeah. Some reviewers on Pixar are that many compared to Minecraft and Ark. I fair. And many said it was a bit more relaxing compared to Ark. You know, I can also say, yeah, that's fair. And many were saying that, but in their own way. So I recognize that, all right, this is a good review. It makes, it makes sense. So yeah, when you do read the reviews, look at both. Negative and positive ones carefully, or even sometimes the positive ones will raise up uh, issues if they find it. Like they, they like it overall, but they will raise up if there is an issue as well. So they may not go blind raising it. Oh, that looked like it would be unblockable or something. I think I've seen a few games where they said that it's a good game, but needs a bit more po polish. This is a fair, a fair review. Yeah, you often have that uh, with early access games. Okay, yep. so we can throw things, we can parry attacks, we've got stealth kills, and hello. For anyone who does a review of an early access game, remember it's an early access game, and don't, don't give them critics and all that and all advice, but don't ever do as I see on some early uh, access reviews do. They forget it's an early access, they just throw insults at the developers like that's that's you don't do that yeah and uh, abby yeah they, of course this is a different game that's why i have four different games named in the title i can only set one as the category on stream the, uh, on twitch though and let's see tab soldier monk okay, okay. we've got a scroll that allows this let's see Press E when aiming to grab an enemy gun. Throw object to ow area in a dis lead pills. Killing with a firearm restores health. Your firearms get a laser sight. Let's get that. Or wait, we did Didn't we We got something that should allow that. Yeah, manuscripts. Hmm. Oh, your manuscripts of those and tablets for the others. Yeah, it did it said something about <laughs> it said about a, a soldier perk though, so I guess that was a small mistake then. Uh, holds as a fifth attack to this type 
Attack from a roll. It, no, this isn't Planet Zoo. This is the game called Redeemer. So no, you won't find any zebras. You we we already done the the, um, the zoo part. Okay. <laughs> Why is it? We, it says we have a manuscript, but it. Okay, what is going on? Okay, the, the controls are in the Xbox controller. Which isn't active anymore, it was earlier. Hmm. F. Ow. Okay. You shove his freaking head into a furnace or something? Don't let him okay, this the game looks like it, it could be a fun brawler. Uh, can hear your stealth kills if they are close. Okay, well, then let's go. Story, an interesting yeah. combat. Yeah. It, it has more than just bare bones like you should. Yeah. It's heavy again. Maybe there's a mod out there. For it to put zebras into this. <laughs> I doubt that. <laughs> oh, okay, I. That was a reflex. <laughs> uh, so he's just going to hang around a bit longer. Like yeah, you kind of need your stomach. <laughs> Why the hell are these guys here for... I, I guess we'll call him the monk for now. Did you say something about traitor? Yeah, it's only a traitor. But hmm. only after your skin. Probably, I'm guessing. Yeah. Okay, getting a bit overwhelmed. There we go. Environmental kills are possible when both you and the enemy are close to certain objects, okay. Like that. Okay, no need to stun them as well, either. And yeah, they've been slaughtering the monks. Okay, now this is looking a lot. <laughs> okay, yeah. Oh, tablets. Auto attack tablets. Okay, yeah. It it's called this. It called this scroll a tablet earlier, and that's one p.m. Uh, I should probably yeah, change that alarm. Let's see. Perks amount zero. Hmm. And now that the manuscripts are zero? Yeah, and it went to your monk uh, part. Hmm. Okay, something seems a bit off. And plasma? Okay. Okay, I feel like if you want to stream this, definitely look up how the heck this works, for there's something we're not getting here. Yeah, it, it says we have one of these now, and I think this was at zero earlier. So we did get the yeah, perk one in, so maybe there's a small error that it doesn't show these perks or something. Hmm. Yeah, but I know when you went away, I saw the manuscript go from one to zero. And Don't into more. For reason. Breathe in, breathe out. Hmm. And you say that when picking up an axe. <laughs> yeah, uh, let's see. Something is off here with this. Hmm. Wait. 
Hmm. Ow. Okay, so there are different <laughs> different counterattacks for different weapons as well. Uh, Abby again, Jingdon Spike. There you cannot always think of the low price. Huh? Okay. Uh, uh, oh. 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 Yeah, if it was, then I didn't get it. it. I think it might be a reference to uh, the one you taped into a tree earlier. <laughs> it might be, yeah. Okay, kicks are very oh, okay, just smashing into the fucking cliffside. I can hear gunfire. And I can also hear myself echo a bit on your end every now and then. Give me that. Shift to draw. And he's going for a swim. That's... Oh, that, that guy took a bullet to the head and... Okay. And another one goes down. Bye-bye. Okay. okay, so you All don't nice get extra room. ammo from these. <laughs> okay, yeah, th this is fun combat. It it's simple but fun. It, it, you, like you don't need some, you know, you don't need game. Yeah, you don't need combat to be like the depth of the ocean for it to be fun. If you just yeah, have a good little loop. Yeah, it's quite cinematic even. Unwelcome guest. <laughs> well, Glossary has been updated. Okay, let's see. Vasily, his past is mostly unknown, while his present is the same as all the other monks in the monastery. Some 20 years ago, Vasily cr crashed his heliplane in the mountains near the Temple of the Vanishing Star. He apparently be uh, he became a permanent resident thanks to Master Lei, the abbot of the monastery, who decided to let Vasily join the monastery. Master Lei invited him to become his pupil, even though Vasily knew next to nothing about their religion and looked less like someone searching for spirituality and more like someone who was looking for shelter from his damaging past. Okay. Despite its size, this ancient monastery remained hidden from to the rest of the world thanks to its secluded location. Deep in mountains covered with, with thick forest, built on the ruins of an even older monastery that was destroyed by an earthquake, the temple remains one of the few places on Earth untouched by modern technology. Until now. Oh, okay, just <laughs> snap his neck. And yeah, they call him a traitor again. Okay, the, wait, what were they even thinking? Trying to attack like a freaking bear of a man like this. Oh, knife. Okay, it shows how damaged an item is as well uh, in the lower left. Oh dear. Do I even want to know what sort of environmental kill we could have done with this thing? Uh, I'm sure of well. And we can carry both a firearm and an eye, uh, a melee weapon. Yeah, that's all axed. Okay. Straight and simple, through the spine. That's a big knife. Yeah. Can we throw it? 
Oh, Two big boy. Always lose against one. Wait, what? Did it? No, oh, that, that was Ves Vesely who said that. I, what I thought. Are you two that uh, uncertain about your your chances? Uh, they really want the bear hug. I know Vesely looks like he's a freaking bear that's been shaved. But uh, let's not. Uh, Executions, multiple kills, and kills with environmental. Okay. Um, okay. It, let's try this. It still won't let me do this, whatever. Hmm. Let's see. Upgrades. Oh, okay. So we. What? Oh, I think I see it. You need to put in the points into it, and then you get to select a perk out of it. Okay, so that's how it goes. And that's why okay. it wasn't responding earlier, because, uh, yeah, to, en to press enter isn't to... Uh, <clears throat> pressing enter doesn't put the point into it. Uh, yeah, that, that is a bit of a point against this game, that it doesn't have translated... Uh, controls for the keyboards or maybe it was because this thing was active earlier hmm. let's try it like the con with the controller for a bit a is that b is the you know wide attack can we look in here perhaps no New weapon. Uh, what button will be the counter then, though? Oh, I think I just got it by accident there. Yep. Get off. B is for grabbing and throwing. Okay. A <laughs> bow stab. Okay, that's going to get fun. Press pistol. Hmm. Out of here. Oh. Uh, what is the... Okay, right... I think right button... Left shoulder button is the counter. That is fire and shoot. Uh, fi uh, then what is... Uh... Oh, but that's a baton. What is the count? Uh, no, right button. Left button is counter. Uh, hmm. Right trigger is for looking around. Now let's... Hmm. How do we put... Let's see. No, no, that was a manuscript. Again, it called it a soldier point, but it's a manuscript. Hmm. Restores more health. Parrying deals damage. Invulnerable during rolls. That is always, always good. Let's... Oh, progresses as you level up punches, kicks, and melee weapons. Okay, so these are class-like skills. You get points in them from putting points in the rest. Okay. Let's see. What do these have? Dragon kick, forward to the combo, roundhouse kick, and attack from a roll. Okay, twice as much in the last strike. Adds another strike to every combo. Hmm, not much variation. Well, let's put one in here. Hmm. All right. What was the time? I think it was 10-4 when we started this one. Yeah. And the stream is supposed to end about in like uh, 90 minutes. Yeah, then we'll have given well, most of these games a half an hour with Pineapple Fro getting uh, 15 minutes. Not that it seems to be like a bad game. Uh, 
but more not too varied at least. Then again, it, there's also a good chance that it could start varying deeper into the game. I guess I didn't have a gun. Okay. Oops. Roll. <laughs> Stop trying to bear hug me, you idiots, and try, just try to hit me. Then again, if you try to hit me, you're probably going to end up killing me. <laughs> okay. Yeah, let, let's let's stick to the keyboard with this. That makes it a bit easier. Yeah, and there's a sledgehammer uh, just on the... There, I think you can see it flashing. Uh, like north of you is the sledgehammer. I see the, the kiln here. Uh, up the wall is on the bridge thingy. There's a wall thingy. It's, it's shiny right there, up, up. Oh, no. there. At the very top of the screen. Say that instead, then. Okay, let's have some hammer time. Nothing is a huge one. Okay, play him. <laughs> Folded him like freaking laundry. Oh, I actually did laundry before stream. Nope. <laughs> oh, not, not even in the water, just on the ledge. <laughs> I was expecting him to knock him the fuck out with the hammer, but no, he sent him for a dive. Okay, yeah, this game is fun. We are playing this. We're streaming this. You just hang on there. Okay, the bear hogs attacks can't be blocked. Yep. Those double claps can be though, so I'll need to keep an eye out for that. I, I don't think this will be a very long game. Uh, still probably good for a fun time. Yeah. You, you can over here. Yeah. <laughs> Wrong one. Saturdays. Yeah. Like I, I think we'll probably be done with Slime Rancher in one or two more times. Yeah, yeah unless they have some more surprises. Yeah, but we'll only find out when we go exploring with that. And uh, hello. I'll take that. Thank you. And that's us dead. Okay. So. Yeah, this, this seems like a pretty fun game. A simple but fun. But simple doesn't always have to be bad. Because, well, games like Super... No. <laughs> Games like Mother Load are very simple. Just dig down, collect stuff, bring it back up, sell it, get upgrades, and go back down again. And still, people played that game plenty. Enough for it to make yeah. a remake on uh, Steam. Okay. Yeah, I guess it depends on how simple you do. Do you think simple as a high way? Or disappointing way? Like, there's a piece of that is too simple. But you don't want to either make something too complicated either. Yeah, it is some, which is why I often don't like JRPGs and such, because there's just systems upon systems, and I just go, but if I'm going to need a spreadsheet for this freaking game, why should I even play? Because half the point of games is to just enjoy your time with it, not <laughs> have to do office work. Yeah, some of the airports do have some good system, I think. But I think I've seen some that I wonder, is this a little bit too much? Yeah. Like EVE Online. A lot of people like that, but 
it, yeah, it, to me, it really just looks like mostly office work. Okay, and it, it also has a bit of a... Oh. It shows enemies that are off, just off screen. Really? And, oh, come on. You couldn't have added a bit of depth to that. Then again, it's, it could just be very shallow water as well. Uh, it is in the water, not on top of it, so... I suppose it was a little bit more splashing there from it. So I think I know that the animating uh, water is not as easy as people think. Yeah. I will risk it for. <laughs> that was a new one. Okay, give me that. They just absolutely massacred this place. Let, let me execute this one. Okay. <laughs> Not much different from what I would have expected. Bear hog attack. Not for a double clap. And the thing that he's getting for that is clap himself. Chucks them across the room. Oh, hell, you're alive. Ow. They... They took some of our brothers alive. I don't know why. Oh. They took them there, I'm guessing, then? Okay, end of level, I think. Yeah. No shelter. Oop. Glossary is updated again. Hmm. Let's see. Monks. The inhabitants of the monastery live with the belief that one should achieve harmony not uh, only through prayer and the study of religious texts, but also through hard everyday labor. And since you can't really chop wood all day long, several centuries ago they started practicing self-defense to protect themselves from the bandits that infested this region. Today their combat techniques are the basis of one of the oldest martial arts in the wood, but also remain one of the less well known. Okay. And uh, yeah, if, if they were chopping wood all day, they would have deforested the place probably. <laughs> yeah, so it, that would also mean easier to find you if there's uh, almost no trees around. Yeah, people would notice that. And if, it, if it's going to unlock one of these entries with each level, then I'm guessing there's only four, six, nine levels. Okay. Uh, short but good, I guess then. Sometimes it, sometimes just making a good little game is good for just the, well, the experience of it. And of, of, as co yeah, of course, always getting experience with something. Uh, yeah, I think we can call it here then. A bit early due to the first game being a bit iffy. But still, a, a good amount of games, I'd say. Uh, okay. Smash through, that's a no. Planet Zoo, maybe on Saturdays. Uh, Red Faction, I'd probably do it on the main week. And Redeemer... Hmm. It could be, could be either. I, I'm guessing probably... I'm guessing it'd be easier to put this on the main weeks because it, it'd probably be short. But it having to get into the get into the flow of the combat after a week would get uh, a bit annoying every time. Uh, true. So, true. yeah. Uh, any thoughts on your end? I really like Redeemer, and I am curious of a red faction. Yeah. Like, I've... I've <clears throat> the red faction series is a good one. I, I'd say overall, people don't really like 2 and uh, the fourth game, Armageddon. I, I liked it uh, quite well, and we can do that as well sometime. I'm not really sure if it counts as a full sequel to Guerrilla. It has been a while since I played that, but I did enjoy it. Uh, Red Faction 1, not really sure if we should stream it. Is, it is an old game, uh, but again, we've also streamed a bunch of old games before. Yeah, uh, Red the Faction Two. I'm not sure on if either. Hmm. Yeah, but we have tons of old games. We should also 
be careful when we do all games for well you remember the issues we had with the, some of the um Soul the of king games yeah yeah um, and we have some is issue with some other old games like that that we should probably be, be careful when we go for an older game I, I thought I left some note paper here around, but apparently it's gone. Again. Uh, yeah, I, I, I should just stick some permanents over here on the bar or something. For now, I'll just note it here. Uh, Red Faction series, maybe. You should have a notebook, just not just a simple note. Okay, and yeah, Redeemer, we, we'll we we'll fit this in somewhere at some point. Maybe as a, a as a fresh taste after a certain... Because we already have a bit of a schedule set with Darksiders, then a different franchise, Darksiders, other franchise, Darksiders. For the coming month or two, possible. Uh, yeah, yep. probable, because... I think Dark Souls 2 and the other franchises, they are quite, they are reasonably long, not like extremely long, which is also something we, I've, um, I've jumped quite a few games in this, uh, some of which were MMOs, which wouldn't be good for streaming anyways, or at least streaming for story, like I do, and others were just games that have been done to death already, like, uh, Psychonauts, and... Yeah, Psychonauts 2 is out recently. I did buy, buy that, but yeah, if, similar to uh, Metroid Dread, like I spoke of yesterday, I think uh, everyone and their dog would be streaming that. Or no, I think I said anyone, everyone and their grandmother would be streaming that. So yeah, I'm not going. I'm not going to jump on any bandwagons, even if it might get some, any attention. But most of this for these streams are just playing with uh, Drakir. If anyone watches it and enjoys it, that's extra. Oh, yeah. And these early ones also to get me out of my freaking bed because I'm lazy as all hell. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, <laughs> next week, more Darksiders. Probably finishing it up. Maybe starting with the other franchise, which also starts with a D. And... Yeah, then the usual schedule of Slime Ranch on Saturday, and next week, more, four more games to try out. And I should have enough for at least another... Uh, um, for a few more months, I should have enough <laughs> uh, yeah, new games to try out for these uh, Sunday streams. And when we run out, I can test out the... Uh, and we can see how well it goes with the uh, streaming from the consoles with that capture card that I have. And something was really firing up my defense on my computer there for a second. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. After when we finally run out of games to try on these uh, streams, then we can just uh, expand it into a second uh, sideshow stream. To just give uh, whatever game we're doing on Saturday another day as well. Yeah, that could also work. Yeah, and of course, I will just be buying new games every now and then because sales and such, or just because I want something. And we we can try out some of those new ones on Saturday, on Sunday as well. But for now, I think I've blabbered on long enough. So, anyone has been watching now or later, thank you for watching, and thank you especially, Dirk here. Oh, you're most welcome, my friend. And, yeah. Darksiders next week. As always, until then, until then. Be safe, folks!